How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So, spring training is almost underway here. Pitchers and catchers are supposed to be reporting in a couple days, but basically the whole Yankee team is already down there. And if that should say anything to us, it should say these guys are getting ready to work. They are already hard at work. They wanted to get a head start to this spring training uh, offseason and ultimately, you know, prepare for the regular season ahead and, you know, World Series aspirations. Aaron Judge is there. Volpe's there. Peraza's there. Everyone's there. Rodon's obviously down there. He spoke um, about his, you know, hope for a bounce back season. We're going to talk about Rodon. Kind of what went wrong, what he is aiming for. And obviously you kind of look at um, the situation at hand with guys like Rodon and Giancarlo Stanton injured a lot last season, they both caught a lot of weight. So the hope for that is more longevity, more stamina, uh, more flexibility, and obviously hoping that their you know injuries don't continue to compound. But, you know, Ryan, before we dive into Carlos Rodon and, and kind of what he said in terms of bouncing back this upcoming year, the importance of that, how do you do today, my friend? I'm doing great. You know, this is a big year for the Yankees. It's going to be a fun spring training, hopefully, uh, and a fun year. Again, hopefully, uh, kind of knocking on wood, hoping that guys don't immediately get hurt like last year. Uh, but, you know, Carlos Rodon is the biggest variable on this rotation right now. I have confidence in him being good this year. I'm not like one of these. I don't know if he's going to be good. I don't know if I like like I don't I don't like what I saw last year. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I look at the stuff and I look at the movement profiles and I say, everything's kind of where it should be. And, you know, I imagine that over the course of a full season with health and, you know, consistent reps, he'll be fine. Uh, and, and I'm going to stick by that. Um, and if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. But, you know, I'm going to go based off stuff, based analysis, instead of just going, all right, this is what his ERA was last year. This is what it'll be next year. Um, you know, I, I think that Rodon is saying a lot of the right things, which is great. Um, you know, I think he's embraced the fact that, look, he's just, a, he's a competitive guy, right? Like he lost his mind on that mound and, you know, it is what it is. He didn't try to make excuses for it. He didn't try to, you know, say, well, it's because I was mad. You know, it, it happens. It was more like, a, yeah, it's unacceptable. I'm not going to, you know, tell you anything else. He looked in better shape in, in images that have come out, um, you know, with him reporting the spring training. Do I think Carl Rodon was incredibly out of shape last year? No. I mean, I, I think it's pretty hard to pitch incredibly out of shape. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't think he was like, at a point where it's unplayable, but he certainly looks a little bit leaner, looks a little bit more, I guess, fine-tuned. He said specifically, like, his, his quote was, he changed his body composition, not necessarily just dropped a bunch of weight, which I think is important. Pitchers need weight to throw hard. Uh, if you lose, like, 30 or 40 pounds, you're not going to be throwing as hard, and also you kind of leave yourself a little more susceptible to injuries. Um, so having a little bit of, uh, you know, having a little bit on you is a little bit, is, is pretty important as a pitcher. Um, you know, there. look at Garrett Cole. Is Garrett Cole, you know, completely lean, you know, 6'3", 180 or something like that? No, right? That's just not a, that's not a realistic body uh, build for pitchers. They need to have muscle. They need to have some thickness, especially in the lower body. Um, so it, it's good to see him make those comments. I would have been a little concerned if he just said, yeah, I dropped like 40 pounds, guys. Uh, I just like lost it out of nowhere. That would have been uh definitely concerning especially in a short period of time um you know I, I, and, I, and I ultimately think he's built for New York I, I don't buy into this idea that he can't handle the Bronx or the pressure I just think he got injured and everything kind of compiled and the Yankees were bad last year and things just didn't go their way I don't know a single thing that went the Yankees way last year outside of like Glaber having a pretty good year and Cole winning the Cy Young. Those, those are the only two things that went their way. Everything else just went sideways. And Rodon is part of a long list of, of things that went wrong. There's a reason why the Yankees gave him $162 million. There's a reason why this time last year, you and I are talking about, is Garrett Cole and Carlos Rodon are they the best pitching duo in baseball? Everything's still there. He still throws 95-96. He still has great ride on the four-seam fastball. He still has an excellent slider. He did actually talk about, um, you know, he, he said this, I'm a two-pitch pitcher. He made sure to say that in the interview. Um, and I find that interesting. Like, he's going to stick to what he does and what he does well. You know, maybe that changes throughout the year during the duration of that contract as he gets older. But I think he views this year as, all right, let me just pretend last year didn't happen in the sense of let me not get caught up in what happened last year. Focus on improvement. Be my best self this year. And, I respect the mentality, and I think it'll yield very good results for the Yankees this year. And if it does, this rotation is going to be scary. It absolutely is. And listen, we are hoping for the bounce back of two players in Rodon and Nestor Cortez. We've talked about this many times. It's not the first time, and it certainly won't be the last. And the Yankees' season kind of rides on them staying healthy. Now, I'll say this, and I think most people would agree, 
look, the Yankees have been injured over the last couple of years. They've had these issues, but the law of averages would say what happened last year will not happen again. Last year was absolutely ridiculous. You know, we lost half of our team, notably most of our best players. Rizzo, we lost Judge for a good portion of time. Stanton obviously was hurt. Rodon was hurt. Cortez was hurt. You know, we lost everybody. Um, you know, Herman goes to the restrictor list for his reasons. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, we just didn't have much to work with at times. And that's, you know, Josh Donaldson, obviously, he was terrible, but he also missed time and we were forced to supplement um, with players that were not as good. So it's like, you know, you look at what the Yankees had happen to them last season. That can't happen again. And what I love that they did this offseason, Ryan, I think is an underrated narrative. They went and acquired players who are consistently healthy. Juan Soto has played a minimum of 152 games over his last three consecutive seasons, including all 162 games last season. It would be much more than three seasons if not for the COVID year. So this guy, like, he stays healthy, knock on wood. Like, that's a really good thing for the Yankees. And not to mention, Alex Verdugo, he's played a minimum of, like, 140 games for three straight years, too. He's been really, really healthy and consistent. So... I do believe the Yankees took steps in the right direction in terms of going out and getting players who are going to show up every freaking day. Um, it's been a problem for us. Like We haven't had those guys that we know. Every day, they are in the lineup. Every now and then, they need a rest day, but that's okay. Um, you know, Soto played every single game last year. Do you know how unique it is to have a superstar-level player that plays every single game? Shohei Otani is not going to pitch this season. Yes, like he's going to hit, obviously, but um, he doesn't offer you any defensive value. Again... Otani's a unicorn. He's a monster. Not disregard, not disregarding that fact. More so just saying the top guns, the top guys, a lot of them miss time at some point. Um, and Soto just consistently is consistently healthy, and that, that's very really unique. And the Yankees took steps in the right direction to go out and get players um, who are going to show up every single day. Now, Marcus Stroman, not exactly that mold. You know, he's pitched a minimum of what, 120 innings over the last couple of years. Obviously, it's not that much. It's enough to get by. I think there's still one more acquisition we can make to reinforce this starting rotation. But what do you think about the shift in narrative here where the Yankees, one of the most injury-riddled teams every single season, made it a priority to go and get players that routinely play over 150 games every single year? Yeah, so the Yankees having, uh, you know, better health and, and better uh, consistency to better track record with their uh, play appearances and innings is going to be important. Um, last year, they just didn't have guys. And if you start running out of bodies by, you know, what was it, August, where they were just like, yeah, we just, we're going to start just calling up everybody. We really don't have anybody left. Uh, that's a bad thing. Like, that's that's a poor reflection of depth. I mean, I, look, I'm not sitting here and saying that they were calling up players that have no place in Major League Baseball. I feel like that's disrespectful. Um, but they were calling up a lot of players who wouldn't be on a playoff caliber or a World Series contending ball club playing as much as they did. They didn't even have outfielders playing the outfield, Alex. I mean, like, it's... The bar was extremely low for last year's team. And they won 82 games. Like, I... Like, the bar was super low by the time August rolled around. And again, they played okay baseball, right? Like, they were an okay baseball team. Were they a fun watch? No. Were they... Uh, did they live up to expectations? Absolutely not. Do they deserve a pass for getting hurt? Again, no. Uh, they don't deserve a pass or anything of the sort. We're not giving them a pass. I'm just saying they had a million things go wrong for them. And they were still okay, right? Uh, they were like an okay baseball team. If they don't have everything go wrong for them and they roll into this year, which they are a better team this year than they were entering last year's team, you know, I feel pretty good about their chances to make the playoffs. And I think every projection system feels good about their chances to make the playoffs. And, you know, people can say, well, every projection system viewed the Yankees as a good team last year. And that is true. And don't get me wrong. I'm not going to run from that. Uh, but those are median outcomes, the 50th percentile outcome. If we're sitting here and saying, if you roll the dice, you know, and you, you're going to roll a one every single time, I think that's an insane thing to say. Has anybody ever rolled the dice and gotten the same number over and over and over and over and over again, right? Like that number changes every time you roll it. The same thing happens with percentile outcomes. Sometimes, you you know, you, you overperform what you should have. Sometimes you underperform that mark. It happens, right? Like that's, that's baseball. That's life. That's math. That's how probability works. You know, you can't guarantee that a team's going to hit their median, but if you're always going to just assume they'll hit below... You're just being pessimistic. Like, again, you're just saying, I don't think this team's going to be good, and I'll say it every year, and, and I'll, you know, like, I, I just, I don't think you're a fan at that point. I think you just don't like the team, and, and that's fine. You don't have to like this team. You don't have to like the front office. You don't have to like the manager. You don't have to like the players, the coaches. You don't have to like any of those people, uh, but just call it how it is, right? You don't have to call it as analysis. Call it how is it how it is. You, you don't like the people in charge. Don't say it's analysis, right? Like, I see a lot of people... A lot of people saying like, I, like, and I don't want to call out specific people in general, um, but you'll see an outlet say, yeah, the Yankees had a B grade offseason, but the Orioles had an A. And it's like, well, we added Juan Soto. 
And then we added like a billion other players on top of that, right? Verdugo, Grisham, uh, Stroman, Ferguson, Gonzalez. You know, some of the guys we lost include negative war players. Like the Yankees, one of the biggest losses the Yankees had in terms of guys that gave them innings was Luis Severino. He gave them negative 0.6 war. The Yankees got better when he left the team. Like, I I don't want to say that Severino was the root of all their problems, but he certainly didn't help. It's not like Frankie Montas did anything for them last year. If you look at the guys they lost from last year's team, outside of like Juan Peralta, is any one of those guys, you sit back and you say, God damn, we lost a really good player this year. No, you look and you say, we got rid of a lot of the, 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 the shit on the roster. You know, a lot of the bad players, a lot of the guys who were not good last year and replaced them with Juan Soto, who might be the best left-handed hitter we've seen on this team in years. I remember tracking this stat earlier in the offseason. The Yankees have not had a hitter from the left-handed side put up a 150 or better WRC plus since like Jason Giambi or something like that. That that predates my existence. You know what I mean? Like, I just want people to understand that. Uh, you know, it has been a while since the Yankees have had a left-handed hitter of Soto's caliber. And you add on Alex Verdugo. Look, is Alex Verdugo a great player? No, but he's an outfielder who can play left field and he's a solid outfielder. He's average, right? Like that's I'm not going to oversell his value. It could be above average, but average to above average is significantly better than whatever the Yankees were getting in left field last year. Trent Grisham's their fourth outfielder. Trent Grisham would have been the team's second best outfielder last year. Uh, you know, look at the pitching staff. Marcus Stroman may not be a stud, but if the Yankees had Marcus Stroman on their rotation last year, I think they make the playoffs. Like that that's how big of a difference it is. You get 2.7 war added to your rotation instead of whatever Severino was giving you, or having to routinely go to bullpen games, which you only could do towards the end of the year. Actually, I'll I'll say one thing. Losing Michael King, that's a big loss. That is a pretty big loss. But he only made, what, like five or six starts? It's not like he was in your rotation every single day. And even out of the bullpen, he was good. He wasn't Mariano Rivera. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I just, I don't view what the Yankees lost this offseason as, god damn, how are they going to replenish it? And look at the additions they made. They got significantly better. They, they, they made massive improvements to their roster. Uh, you know, if Carl Rodon is as bad as he is last year, man, I don't know what I'll say. Like, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't even know if you could pin it on cash at the point. Like, I if Carlos Rodon, after being two years in a row, like one of the three best pitchers in baseball, completely stinks again this year, I don't know what to say. If Nestor Cortez is god-awful again, so be, I mean, if every, if you're just, like, I, I, I said this earlier in a different podcast, or earlier this week, or last week, but if you're just gonna say everyone who was unbelievably bad compared to their career norms are also going to be unbelievably bad to their career norms again this year, if you think Aaron Judge is running into another wall at full speed, if you think that for some reason the Yankees are going to give John Carlos Stanton 130 starts if he's not playing well... I, I have another thing coming for you. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I'm not saying I can guarantee that Judge is going to be healthy or I can guarantee that Rodon's going to bounce back or I can guarantee that Cortez will bounce back. But if you're just going to assume that they're going to just have everything bad possibly happen to them again, you're, just, you're never going to have hope in this team. It is as simple as that. That's, that's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I do believe that the Yankees are going to be a lot better this upcoming season. As I mentioned, the law of averages would, su- would suggest that, especially when it comes to Rodon. Um, he had his worst season last year. You know what I mean? In the first year of a $162 million deal, he knows what, what bouncing back means. He knows that this year, you know, if he performs well, if the Yankees have a really good one-two punch at the top of the rotation, they're going to be a World Series caliber team. Um, and they may end up adding an arm at the deadline or even in a couple weeks here. So for now, we kind of look ahead to spring training. Guys are working. They're already taking batting practice. They're getting ready. They're warming up. This is what you want to see from a winning team, guys. This is what you want to see from a team that's committed to uh, taking the next step forward, bouncing back from a really bad 2023. You know, the leaders are being leaders. They're they're showcasing um, those intangible qualities to get there early, you know, put the work in, set the tone for the youngsters. And then you have the youngsters who are leaders in their own right. Anthony Volpe is a leader. Austin Wells. You know, these guys are really putting on um, a show when it comes to how to lead a team and, and how to kind of set the example. You know, if you're a Giants fan, you remember Eli Manning. Dude never spoke. He didn't say a freaking word, but he led by example. And everything he did was professional, disciplined. He did everything he could to be a winner. Um, And I think these Yankee players, they love being Yankees. Aaron Judge loves being a Yankee. Anthony Volpe loves being a Yankee. Those are the type of guys that win championships, in my opinion. We just haven't had enough of them, and they they weren't all kind of ready. I think Volpe's ready to be an impact player. We know Judge is. We know Cole is. Some other guys got to step up. Um, this is the year we got to do it because next season, 
It's going to be a crazy whirlwind of free agency uh, situations where we have to make choices on Glaber Torres' future, Soto, Verdugo. You know, if we acquire a pitcher on an expiring deal, it's going to be pretty hectic. Uh, but for now, we enjoy all these guys being Yankee players and hopefully living up to their expectation and staying healthy. So we'll keep you guys updated on all the further developments during spring training. Obviously, not underway just yet, but it's about to get exciting, really about to get hot. And it's going to be fun. So make sure to like and subscribe, as always, to the Fireside Yankees podcast. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.